on today's episode at Lost Visions performance. This is hashtag Belugabus. Um, it is owned by the Traveling Broccoli. Um, it is here today, even though you cannot see the emblem that is missing. It is in fact a Chevrolet. It is back in our shop yet again. This time to pull the transmission. Uh, transmission seems to be doing okay at this time. The flex plate seems to have broke. So while well, it still runs, making a hellacious rattle, uh, the sound goes away with load on it. So um, if you have it started up and it's in park or neutral, you hear it rattling, it'll kind of go away and come in and out. Um, if you put it into drive or reverse, the sound will go away or change completely. So we are uh, fairly certain that it is just a broken flex plate. Not real uncommon um, for these or a lot of other vehicles, um, even the later ones behind the 5.3s, 4.8s, 6.0s. It's pretty common for those to break a flex plate, um, not even just on GM. Um, a lot of Fords and Dodges do it too. These flex plates, they take a beating. Uh, luckily, the part itself is pretty cheap. Uh, it's just the labor intensiveness of doing it. So we'll show you today um, what you'll be looking at pulling a 4L80E. Um, this will also be very similar as to pulling a 4L60E. Um, this one is two wheel drive, which makes it a lot simpler than pulling one on a four wheel drive, but at least you'll get a little bit of uh, insight as to what you'll be looking for or looking forward to if you will be pulling a transmission from your GM vehicle. Um, it is bolted to a uh, Chevy small block TBI 350, um, but regardless of if it's a 350 or 454, or even one of the diesel ones, you're still doing primarily the same work, even against the uh, later trucks with the uh, 5.3s and 6.0s, you know, all the uh, LS-based engines we have under here. Also, this one is simpler because it's in a van. A lot of things working on a van is not so simple, um, but this is nice because with that doghouse off, you can actually get to the upper bell housing bolts, which is most of the uh, issue when doing them on trucks and stuff like that. Just getting to the bell housing bolts can just be a real pain. What we'll be doing is we will show you what size and everything. We'll be first taking off the uh, bolts that go from the flex plate to the torque converter. Um, this one already has has the inspection cover off so um, yours if it's all together you will see a uh, kind of like a tin steel cover that goes up there it's usually four about uh, three eighths or ten millimeter bolts um, we'll have to undo all the bell housing bolts um, on this setup the starter can actually stay because the starter is bolted to the block so it doesn't really interfere um, other vehicles have them bolted up to the bell housing of the transmission but like I said not a problem on this uh, we'll have to do all the bell housing bolts uh, we will have to remove the transmission dipstick tube at least get it pulled up out of the way and then undo the transmission cooler lines uh, later models these go in they have a uh, a hair clip or a Jesus clip, whatever you want to call it, that goes and snaps in to hold them. Um, these ones are actually thread in. Makes it a, a simpler setup. Um, this one will have to undo the uh, transmission mount and also the cross member. Undo the uh, four uh, bolts for the drive shaft to hold the straps in for the U-joint. And on this one, we're just going to undo uh, two bolts for the center carrier on this one. And then it has that slip yoke right there. So we'll just have to undo this, undo the carrier. Then I'll slide back a little bit and we'll just let the drive shaft come down. Um, not actually totally pull it out and then uh, after all that we'll have a little jack under here and we should be able to actually uh, just slide the transmission back like I said we're not doing any work on the transmission itself so we don't need to totally remove it out from the vehicle but we'll be doing everything um, basically as if we were because um, everything will be totally taken apart we'll just be sliding it back just enough to get in there and uh, get the bolts off for the flex plate to the crank and then get the new one in and all that. So um, we'll see how that goes. On this one, on some vehicles, you will have to undo the exhaust. On this one, I'm pretty sure we have enough room that we're not gonna have to worry about that. Um, but if you do um, on your setup, especially on some of the four wheel drives and everything, um, We'll want to make sure you soak those bolts down with some penetrating oil because they can be a bear. So, all right. So that's the intro to uh, what we are doing and why. And uh, we're going to get some tools together and uh, start working on this. And we'll show you what it takes. The Mr. Broccoli has had to use a uh, pry bar in there to be able to hold the flex plate and torque converter so he can break them loose because these babies are really tight. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yours may be slightly different, but on this exact one, they are 15 millimeter. One of them was a 9 16 so. So it appears that there is six, actually. I thought there was only four on these, but there is six. Well, now we're undoing some of the bell housing bolts. We are up inside the van right now. There's also the mount for our dipstick tube that we need to undo so we can move the transmission back as well. What size is your bell housing bolt, Brock? Nine sixteenths, just like every other bolt on the other. Mm. 
shift cable is quite simple. That one comes up through here. It has one uh, little uh, grommet where it snaps over this stud for the selector shaft. Um, just carefully get your pry bar kind of behind it and it'll pop off there. Um, you do want to be careful. Sometimes that grommet will get uh, kind of brittle. So you want to try to not break that. Pop that off there. And then this is the cable. It comes down through this bracket up here. Um, that one comes through and has the two snaps. This one's right here for the wing snaps. Um, what's easiest for that is to just use a large pair of channel locks and be careful not to break the plastic, but just enough to uh, squeeze those tabs in. Um, you do have to remove um, this big looking staple first. So that actually goes in um, once the cable is snapped through the bracket. This goes in behind these wings to keep it from ever pulling through. So this piece just, you can screw driver behind it, just pull that out through, squeeze those wings, pull it up, and then it is out of the way. And then we do have the, the one plug here that goes for the electronics. And a couple other spots where the harness kind of sits over this one. I don't think it's actually attached. Um, oh, that yeah. one, I think no. that one is one of our output speed sensors. Yeah, there's two speed sensors. Is the input and output speed sensor. Okay. We got to disconnect this. Yeah, so we will have to unhook these speed sensors. Sorry about that. Rock has got all the bell housing bolts out. And then we got the dipstick tube uh, loosened up. It's still sitting there, um, but we'll just move it up out of the way once we go to actually start moving it back. Like I said, nothing needs to be done with the starter. Cooler lines are off. We did uh, drop the drive shaft. Those are 7 sixteenths for the drive shaft strap, so there's a total of four bolts. And then two bolts back there for the carrier bearing. Um, we just undid that, and then uh, we're able to just set the drive shaft over to the side. Uh, now we got to undo the uh, cross member and the uh, transmission mount and then we should be able to uh, slide this baby back. All right, so we have the old flex plate out of the van and uh, we didn't find any major cracks like we thought we were going to find. Um, but what ended up happening is the uh, bolts going to the crankshaft were actually uh, a little bit loose. So it's hard to tell really. Um, also, you will see some marks just from any flex plate once the bolts have been tightened down. Um, but this one you can really tell. Um, it's hard to tell in the video, but you can really tell in person how it's kind of knocked down right there because this has been moving a tiny bit back and forth on those bolts. And then another telltale on that is on the bolts, um, on the shank of them at the very base where it goes up against the head, um, you can see a shiny spot where the threads have been hammered down a little bit. So between that, you see how the damage in here, and then, uh, like I said, it's hard to see in the video, but also where the uh, dowel pin goes through, you can see the metal is raised very slightly, where it's kind of hammered it out a little bit. So that was uh, the sound we were finding. And you can see on these ones, see the little shiny spot on that? That's where the flex plate here was actually hammering back and forth against it. So a lot of them, when you pull it apart, they'll have cracks along here when the flex plate breaks. So this one, the flex plate itself didn't fail, um, but the loose bolts doing that, um, unfortunately, if you get to it like this, um, you do need to replace this because with it being having been moving like that, it has even larger tolerances now and is going to be much more prone to doing it again. So we will go ahead and uh, reinstall our new flex plate. Um, he also did get uh, new flex plate bolts as well which we highly suggest replacing, um, especially if you had a failure like this. For the removal, um, that's everything you need to know on this setup. Like I said, this one being a two-wheel drive, and especially being in a van, it was uh, much simpler than pulling out on some of the other vehicles, so that is kind of a plus. But uh, just a little heads up for you guys on uh, what you're looking for, and then uh, if you are changing a flex plate on one of these, um, we did look it over, made sure it had the right tooth count, right diameter, right for the crank mount and everything. You see the whole six set up, it looks right, but they're about a quarter inch off on the other ones. I uh, hope some of this helps, and uh, we thank you guys for watching, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. All right, thank you. Your so small. Thanks, I get that a lot. <laughs>